What is up, Sagebrush? Happy Monday. So glad to be back with you. My name is Eric, and we are here for your message discussion video. And as always, I'm joined with my good friend, Andrew, Pastor Andrew Poe, on this beautiful Monday. Andrew, yes. we have started a new series called Would You Rather. It's the second series in a row with a question mark at the end. Correct. Can you tell us, uh, say hi to everybody watching? And let us know a little bit about what we're doing this series. Great. Well, hello, everybody on Facebook and YouTube. Good to have you guys here with us. Man, love spending Mondays with you guys just talking about the weekend and kind of what God has done. And we kicked off a brand new series called Would You Rather? And I don't know about you, but uh, Eric, I used to be a youth pastor, so we used to yep. do Would You Rather questions all the different times. And man, it always is fun. Uh, seeing all the weird noses uh -huh. this weekend on the intro videos was very very weird and yeah. asking all those questions was weird, but man, it was a great time to kick off this new series all about the choices that we make because our choices really do define us mm -hmm. and the choices that you make and man, whether or not you choose to do this or that, it always has a way of having just drastic consequences no matter what you choose. And so, man, it was a great kickoff to a good series. Yeah. I'm excited for this series because, uh, we've been going through a lot of choices and the yes. impact. I mean, whether you want to talk about the election, there's a choice yes. or talk about how what's happening with this global pandemic with choices and things like that, but more so in our own lives, how choices affect our destination. So I'm glad we're going through that really timely. And so what we're going to do here for those of you who may be new or just scrolling across is we are going through our small group study questions. And we want to encourage you, especially if you're watching on Facebook, you can, uh, comment below and share in the comments and we'll interact with you here. If you're watching this with your small group, you can hit pause when we ask questions. If you're watching it on your own, just hit pause when we ask you a question and ask the people around you or journal or whatever. Whatever. But we're going through the small group study to give you a little bit of a taste of what small groups are like. And Andrew, why is it so important that we get involved in small groups? Well, I think, uh, you, you guys know as well as I do, none of us like the idea of going on a lockdown because we love people. Yes. God wired us up to know people and mm -hmm. to be in relationships. And so this is hard for us all as a community hearing about the new restrictions and everything else. Yep. And so that's why this series is also so timely because we can all have an attitude a little bit with kind of the different lockdown things. But we know that as a church, the way that you're going to make it through is when you're tied into a community. Mm -hmm. And a small group is that important community that really ties you in. They're the people who check in on you. They're the people who want to make sure that you're growing closer to God in your daily relationship with Christ. And so, man, I know that it's so important for us to stay in community, even right now, whether it be through you spending the time with us on Facebook or YouTube today, what? you have made the decision to be in community and just to get a taste of what it's like to be in a small group. And so, man, if you haven't found a small group to join yet, you got to find a small group to join. We've got a link that we can put right now in Posting the comments. in the comments. Yes. Someone's and we'll do that do right, right now. now so that you guys can get connected into a group. But, man, we'd love to share with you how you can be in a small group. Yeah, especially over the next two weeks, especially as we go into the holiday season. Uh, it's going to be very important that you get involved in a small group. And so this is how it goes. We're going to start off with an icebreaker question. And this icebreaker question is a would you rather question, which I'm yes. excited about. And we asked this, uh, I think, on maybe on uh, Instagram or something earlier. But would you rather always be 10 minutes late or always be 20 minutes early and why? Ooh. I would rather be 20 minutes early. Okay. I am always an earlier guy, and the idea of being 10 minutes late just scares me. Okay. Uh, because, man, that's always hard. I yeah. feel like I'm inconveniencing the other person. Sure. And, like, I feel guilty about the conversation or anything else. And so, man, I hate being late. Now, yeah. my wife is habitually late. Okay. So there's always tension at the Poe house. Yeah. Because at times we don't show up on time, which I love being on time, Eric. It's kind of my love language. <laughs> Your love language is being on time. Okay. What yeah. about for you, bro? Well, I've seen in the comments here, a lot of people say, I hate being late. So earlier on time, early because it shows respect for others. Always early, 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 early. Everybody says See, early. See, everybody's early. Uh, somebody said, my mom always told me if you're not 10 minutes early, you're late, which I think we've got that going around the office. It's That's like true. five minutes before a meeting uh, is you on gotta time. Be on time is late. Yeah. Todd uh, might shut the door on you. you I would you, say you might that, not be able to come into the meeting. Right. Right. So I, I don't love being late at the same time. I, I don't know. It's because I think I'm always just habitually running late because yes. I overpack my schedule. Okay. Is what it is. It's not, you know, 
It's not because I don't want to be early. It just happens that I just kind of back things up back to back to back. And I get into, like you guys have probably seen, if you've been here, we talk about some things. Yes. And I just get long-winded, and then I end up running over time. So I want to be 10 minutes. He's a communications guy. I want to be 20 minutes He's early, a communications guy. But I'm guy. usually he loves 10 it. minutes late. So uh, <laughs> going into our next question, why do you think so many people end up at a destination where they never intended to go? Well, I think that there's two reasons why people end up at the wrong place that they don't want to be. A, a lot of times it's they don't understand the gravity of yep. the choice that they're making. So they didn't really think about that decision. They didn't weigh out the pros and cons. Mm -hmm. And so they just made the decision thinking, I hope this works out well. Mm -hmm. And that never goes well with people because, man, when you haven't really thought through your decisions or you're just making an unconscious decision, then, man, you're kind of making the decision to fail in advance. Right. You know, because you haven't really weighed the consequences. You haven't really thought about things. And so I think sometimes people are mindless and they didn't really think about it. The other thing with decisions, I think that sometimes our inability to make a decision really holds us back as well. Yeah. And so when we get so locked up thinking through all the pros and the cons and the scenarios, that equally can really hold you back. Yeah. And so when you get held back and you're not making a decision, actually you just kind of get stuck. Mm -hmm. And so you end up at a destination where you didn't want to be because you never really moved forward. Right. Yeah, I think there is, that's key, you know, uh, and I've heard whether you listen to like a uh, Dave Ramsey or other, you know, pastors will talk about this, but like nobody wakes up in the morning thinking I want to be uh, in financial ruin, Correct. right? Today I'm going to ruin myself financially, but it's every choice that you make along the way that gets you to that point. Or, you know, pastors will say this too, like uh, I didn't wake up today thinking that I'm going to ruin my marriage, mm -hmm. but it's every choice that you make or don't make along the way that helps you get to that destination. And, and, you know, I think that you're right. You know, we're not thinking through that. People kind of live day to day or it's like, mm -hmm. what do I want to do now as opposed to how will now affect me in the future? So mm -hmm. that leads us into our next question. Uh, last weekend we shared uh, or this last weekend we shared that our choices lead us to a destination. How have you found this to be true in your own life? I think this was definitely a zinger that Todd shared this last weekend and I loved it because I think really our choices do always lead us to a destination. Mm -hmm. And it's just like driving a car, right? When you're driving a car, you're making multiple different decisions as you're going, whether or not you're going to be in the right-hand turn lane, mm -hmm. whether you use your blinker, which in New Mexico, a blinker is important, folks. <laughs> please use your blinker. You and please follow through with what you decide to do with your yeah, blinker right. in New Mexico, because sometimes people turn on their blinker and just leave it on, or they mm. move to the opposite lane and different things like that. That's a side point. But anyway, the way that we drive, you're going to face a ton of different decisions, and those will all lead you to get to the one spot. When our decision-making is flawed, or when we're not thinking about that final destination, that's where problems really mm -hmm. come. I don't know if you've ever been in a car with a person who gets behind the wheel and they don't really know where they're going yeah. and they drive around aimlessly. Nope. That is no fun at all because you're not really going anywhere. You're not really getting to that right destination. And so you've got to have that destination in mind that you want to go, which is why for the past couple weeks, we've talked all about having a purpose in mm -hmm. your life yep. and maybe making that purpose, knowing Christ and making Christ known and living according to that. Because when you know where you want to go, uh, man, you're going to have much more success getting there every time. Yeah, and I, I think that's uh, that's very that's very true. You know, uh, my, my wife talks about that when she was growing up, her grandma used to play the left-right game with them, and so they would just go oh, driving no. and then randomly just like, do you want to go left or do you want to go right? Do you want to go left do you want to go right? <gasps> oh, no. And eventually they would just end up somewhere. They would always end up in a destination, and then they'd try to figure out how to get back, that right? That sounds you know? awful to me. And, yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's the thing, that even if you don't, intentionally choose, you're unintentionally choosing something, which Correct. is going to lead you to a destination. And, it, you know, I heard Andy Stanley say this one time that uh, whether it's in leadership or parenting, um, the way that your team acts, the way that your kids act, the way that your business is set up is a perfect outcome hmm. for the choices that you've made for your particular leadership style, for your particular parenting style. So if you like, if you're looking around at your wife and you're going, how come our kids have so much attitude? Yeah. Uh, look at what choices you've made as parents that have led them to that point. You know, oh, how come all of my employees are lazy? Look at the mm. decisions that you've made as a leader because you've set the choices that you've made as a leader have set your team up perfectly for the results that you're getting. That's so I, true. I love thinking that way when it comes to how our choices lead us to that destination. Anything else? 
No, Let's I think see. you got it, bro. Let me look in here. Let's see. People don't, uh, Elaine says people don't take the time to think about what happens after the decision. It's the excitement of the moment. And Ooh. when you talk it out with God first, it puts the brakes on uh, instant gratification. Ooh. Oh, instant gratification. Elaine, you're hitting us right there. I mean, like, woof, that instant yeah. gratification thing. How often do you want to choose whatever it is? Because you want that oh, thing so now. Right? And I love the story that Todd shared this weekend about the guys playing mud football. Mm -hmm. And then after a little while realizing oh, yeah. that it might have been a sewer break uh, oh. down at the apartment complex next door. And just that's so our life, right? right? Where you're having the time of your life. You're thinking you're having so much fun. You've made all these choices. And then you realize, Whoops. wait, my choices led me to this spot where I'm mm. playing football and poop. It's kind of gross <laughs> as a thought, but that's exactly where they were at. <laughs> okay. Well, moving on from there. All right. I'm not really sure how to transition that well. You just go to the Bible. We're going to be in the Bible. Just okay, go to the Bible. Open up the Bible. We're going to be in James, which I love the book of James. It's probably my favorite book in the entire Bible. Chapter one, verses five through eight. Here you we go. would love James. Why is that? He's so straightforward. I know. That's... I mean, he's not cut and dry. He just he straight shooter. Deal. Yeah. And my favorite part is... If you are the brother, or I guess the half-brother of Christ, like, what would your brother have to do to convince you that he's the son of God? That's the truth, dude. Right? That's so that, so that's where I'm just like, James, I will listen to whatever James says. Whatever he says. That's what happened. Anyway, James, chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith mm. is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Wow. The question is, what promise do we have to claim from these verses, and how does this promise give you confidence in your own life as you seek wisdom? Yeah. I love that all that God is always generous with giving wisdom. Mm -hmm. And that takes us asking for it. And I love that God gave Solomon that same choice, right? He asked Solomon, what, what's one thing that I can give you? You know, what's yeah. one thing that I can do for any of you, you know, for you and your kingdom and everything? And Solomon asked for wisdom. Yeah. And as a result, God gives him everything else. And so, man, we need to ask God for wisdom as well. And this wisdom has to be entailed in, in faith, right? It can't be just wishy-washy, but it has to truly believe that God's got our best for us, that he wants our best and that he wants to help us along with us. Now, wisdom's different. It's not like book smarts, right? Because mm -hmm. you've met people who have like book smarts. They've been to all the right schools and everything like that, but they they don't really have that that street smarts from experience and living life. But God really wants to give that to us as we, you know, learn more about him from his word and as we learn to trust him from the experiences that we have every single day. I believe that's where wisdom really occurs. Yeah. Yeah, I think what I like there is when it talks about, it says in verse five, he will not rebuke you for asking, right? Yeah. And so how many times as a parent, like, you know, again, my kids are eight and nine years old. Am I just like done with their questions? Yeah. And I'm just oh, like, I'm oh, stop with the questions, you know. <laughs> but in reality, these verses say that God wants us to question and ask these yep. questions and ask wisdom um, and wants us to ask from him. And so, you know, I love it. Uh Earlier on, we, we mentioned that, you know, uh, when Elaine said that stopping to ask God mm -hmm. breaks us of that instant gratification, so you know, true. just getting that opportunity to take a, take a, a second and really talk through it before, uh, before acting on it yeah. is so important because that's going to make that destination even better. So the opposite then, let's ask the question, what warning do these verses teach us when we, a when we ask to wis um, what warning do these verses teach us when we ask for wisdom and do you find asking in faith easy or difficult and why? Yeah. Well, I think what's so interesting about this passage as I look at it is that divided loyalty, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So when your loyalty is divided, when you're not really trusting in God or you're kind of one foot in and one foot out, or when you're always trying to be in the driver's seat with every choice that you make, yep. you are going to have a hard time. Uh -huh. You're going to struggle. You're going to be like a, a wave that's tossed in the sea is the imagery that it gives where it's just moving back and forth where it really is just unsettled at all times. Yep. And that's a life really where you try to put yourself in the driver's seat and you want to make all the decisions as to what's best for me. You're going to be unsettled in this life. And so God wanted us to know that, man, when we put our faith in him, when we trust in him, when we put him in the driver's seat, when we ask him for wisdom, he is gracious and he's going to give it to us. Mm -hmm. But man, when we try to take control on our own, when we try to make decisions about what's best for us, we're always going to struggle. Yep. What do you see? Yeah. And I think that's also true. You know, when it talks about uh, be sure that your faith is in God alone 
And then it talks about specifically a divided loyalty. Yeah. And so it's what is that question really leading you to? What Where is that heart of the question? You know, is it a, hey, God, I really want you to give me this thing because I think that this is the right thing. So can you bless what I've already decided is the right thing? <laughs> and nobody would come out and say that directly. Yeah. But, you know, especially, you know, and again, like you've talked about being a, a youth pastor, a student yeah. pastor, and counseling young adults and people who are kind of yeah. in the single and ready to mingle version of yeah. their lives. Uh it's like, um, uh, Pastor Andrew, Pastor Andrew, would God is God's gonna bless this relationship I have, right? You know, oh, did you ask him before you got into the relationship, or are yeah. you already in it, asking for him to kind of bless this in, you know, uh, uh, retcon the whole thing, where you're just like, Correct. yes, this is uh, this is what I'm gonna bless uh, from from uh, the future here. But in reality, stopping and asking for wisdom beforehand, and just going, God, I. I understand the answer might be tough mm-hmm. because the wise decision is usually the tough decision. Sure. And the wise decision isn't the decision that makes you feel good in the moment, but has that kind of lasting benefit yeah. for you. And what if we did pump the brakes? Right. What if we did ask God first before we made all these plans, before we mm. decided on what path we were going to go? Man, what if we what if we really right. sought his face? What if we asked him for wisdom before we made yep. a decision? I think that we'd be better off. And a lot of times we get guilty of that here at the church. Right. Because if you've ever been around Sagebrush, we are a fast moving organism. I mean, man, we love to do things. And sometimes we can get ahead of ourselves. Yep. We can get planned and everything like that. And at the end of the meeting, it'd be like, oh, do did we pray? Right. Did we pray? Did we ask God to really work in this? Mm-hmm. And man, I think we have to start with prayer. Right. We have to ask, seek God first for wisdom and then ask God just to be with us. Yeah. I think that's so important. Yeah, and I think even just this last week, you know, so like uh, you, we've brought up some different people around the church that are great. Uh, my, the person that I work with, my boss, his name is Chris, he is like, uh, um, uh, Todd described him as super methodical. Right? Very he's methodical. not slow, but he's methodical. He's in important around he makes here. makes those, those decisions. And I really respect that because um, in our relationship, I'm kind of like gas and he's kind of like brakes. You know, I'm just like, let's go, let's try it out. And we'll fix it later. And he's like, no, we're going to think about it. We're going to think through all the answers and kind of ask for wisdom. And I'm like, ah, oh, let's ask for action. How many times do I want to ask for action? Like, let's move on this. When in reality, I probably hit myself in the face so many times because I don't stop and pause and, and really seek out the wisdom. I'm like, so oh, sure. God will help us fix it later. Yeah. No, he wants us to ask for wisdom on the front end. Yep. Okay. Getting into it. Luke 22 verses 39 through 42. Luke 22 verse 39. Then, accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went, as usual, to the Mount of Olives. There, he told them, pray that you would not give in to temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. So, give us a little bit of idea where we're at in the in the narrative right now. And then, the question is, what stands out to you about Jesus' prayer? Yeah, Jesus is on his way to die. Yeah. Uh, on the cross for every wrong thing that you and I have ever done. And so before he does that, you know, he spends one final meal with the disciples. He teaches them a lot of different things. And then after he's done with that, then he goes in the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. Mm-hmm. And it's during that time that Jesus knows exactly what he's going to go yep. through. He's the God of the universe. He knows the amount of suffering that he is going to take on himself. And so here he is. He's kneeling in the garden. And what is he asking for? He's saying, God, if it's possible... If it's possible for me to get out of this, if it's possible for me to not have to drink this cup of suffering, all the hard things that he was going to about to go through, God, let it be. But yep. then he says, nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours be done, Lord. Right. And that's so huge because here is Jesus submitting himself and saying, God, I don't want to do my thing. This isn't my choice, but God, I'll follow wherever you lead. Mm-hmm. And for me, that's humbling, bro. Yep. Yeah, I think, you, you know, you hit the nail on the head, too. He knew his purpose. He knew what he was there for. Um, at the same time, what I like about that question that stands out to me is he wasn't afraid to ask for what he wanted. Correct. Right? So, yeah. like, uh, it's not like he's going to the cross. I mean, yes, it, in some ways you could say he he did it out of joy because he knew what was going to happen. But the yeah. human side of Jesus was going. is still pulled. This is going to be terrible. Yeah. You know what I mean? If he had the foresight to know that all of the sin of everyone who ever lived and ever would live and ever would sin would be on him and he would yeah. be forsaken from God. Like so true. that pain is probably way more than the pain of the actual suffering the of, thorns and everything of the, else. yeah, of the most gruesome torture he could have experienced. He still says, Hey, uh, if you're willing, take this cup. If there's any other way, take this cup, mm-hmm. but I want your will to be done. And I think what a great 
what a great posture to have if oh, in yeah. reality, you know, I mean, we're looking at these situations which our suffering is nowhere near what Jesus is suffering. Oh, but if I'm so looking true. forward, I'm going, all right, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Yeah. Um, vacation, you know, ski yeah. ski season. Most of the ski areas we're going to open next week. And yeah. It's like, God, I, I would love to be able to do these things. Yep. But you know what? It Your will be done. Even though it's going to suffer and I know that I'm going to have to change some of the ways so true. that I'm doing stuff and... But God, I want your will to be done here, you know. And and as much as I want to take up arms and get all upset and yeah. you know, I'm drive your truck against, with flags. Yeah, I'm going to you know rally against whatever I'm going to. God, I, I'm asking for the peace and the calm and the understanding um, that your will is going to be done. That's so true. So and I think that's oh man, that is so important. Yeah. But making that decision making process, not not what's best for me, mm-hmm. but God, I want to follow you. Yep. Wherever you lead, just like Jesus did. I think that's so important for us. And especially this time, knowing like what's in it for us, we know what it's like to be quarantined. Right. We know what it's like to be sheltered at home. We yeah. know what it's like, but still saying, you know what? I am going to refuse. To, you know, I'm going to choose to have a good attitude with this. Right. I'm going to choose to bring life and healing to my children, to my family, to everybody else as we go through that. That's a decision that we have to make. Right. Roxanne and Elaine both comment in here. Roxanne says this: is one of our biggest struggles is letting go of the control and seeking God's answer first. Mm-hmm. Um, and Elaine says letting go of the control is the hardest thing to do. I agree that that control aspect. But then Roxanne goes further and says sometimes we're too quick to make a decision rather than waiting on God's timing mm-hmm. for the answer. And I think that's that's totally true for me. Is not only the control of what the decision mm-hmm. is going to be. But even more so, the timing. So true. Because, you know, God is sitting there whether, like we talked about before, if you're single and, and you you just praying hope above all hope that you would have a relationship or maybe you're married and you're praying for kids, whatever that happens to be, or a job or whatever, get into the school that you want to, or, or you're in high school right now and you're going, man, I want to just get back to my sports, get yep. back to my... God might be saying yes, but not yet. And that's <sighs> different than a no, but if you push on that, the answer is going to be worse than what yeah. you wanted in the first place. So true. So let's ask this question. When you think about what God wants for your life, what gets in the way between what God wants and what you want for your life? Uh, for me, it's it's usually always myself. Mm-hmm. It's usually uh, me trying to take control and trying to take the reins and making the decision just based upon myself. And yep. usually, Eric, I'm, I'm my own worst enemy with this. Um, but I think that Todd said this very well. A lot of times when guys go home after a long day of work, what do they want to do? They want to relax on yep. the couch. Yep. They want to watch ESPN. They want to have a nice meal and all those different things. And sometimes I fall right right back into yep. that. And so I have to make the conscious decision of, no, I'm going to serve others. Uh-huh. I'm not going to make this decision based on what's in it for me, but I'm going to be about loving and serving other people, helping other people along yeah. in their spiritual journey. And I think that that's so important for us. Yeah, exactly. I think that that's the thing for me too, is what gets in my way is I think, um, it's an unhealthy, uh, I would say it's, it's like, it's like an unhealthy focus on the wrong things. Okay. You know, so like you talk about, like whether it's my own personal comfort, whether it's my own mood or anything else like that. But I think even right now thinking through like, uh, what is the most important thing for you? Are you truly, as mm-hmm. a follower of Christ, are you truly a citizen of heaven and you have all the responsibilities that come with that as far as helping sure. to spread the gospel and being kind to others and loving others? Or are you too wrapped up in kind of what is going on as being a citizen of Correct. the state or country yeah, that you're earth. a part of, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've chatted with others about that and I go, like, sometimes I elevate my own freedoms as an American over my responsibilities as a Christian. That's so true. And I think that that's, that's one thing that God is working on me to go, yes, you're free to do these things as an American citizen, uh, but you have a responsibility to intentionally restrict some of those things okay. and also to seek first, what does God want me to do? Not what am I kind of allowed mm. to do, if you that's will. So true. What do you think? I, man, I think you hit the nail on the head is we have so many freedoms Mm -hmm. and sometimes we can take advantage of that and say, well, I'm, I'm free in this way or that way I can just do kind of whatever we want and God's going to love me anyway. Right. But man, that, that line of thinking gets all of us in trouble, Mm -hmm. you know, because when we don't make decisions on what pleases God, what is the best way that Andrew Poe can honor God in this situation, in my family, in my church, in my working relationships, man, that is always going to please him. And it's all also going to leave us more satisfied in life. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's when you're interacting with people. That's when, you know, people are hurting. I think all of those situations to go, can I, you know, think about where where Jesus was at right before he went to the cross and you're going, 
as much as I'm suffering here too, can I put that aside because my kids are watching? Can I put that aside because my wife is watching because others are watching me and my reaction to how the situation is going to go? You know, can I say, hey, guys, I don't like this either, whatever situation you're going into, but Mm -hmm. I'm going to trust in God's timing. I'm going to, you know, in fact... What if this this is a crazy and this isn't in the notes, so this is just random. random. This is just for this from is Eric. just random right now. What if this week you pause that when somebody was upset or when you felt like oh man you're letting that anger you're letting that frustration get up? What if you just pause? You said hey guys, can we just take a time out? Let's pray about this right now. Wow. What if we just prayed about this right now? Whether that's your, your with your family, with your spouse, with your coworkers, wherever you're at, and somebody comes up and they're at, maybe it's a gossip thing uh-huh. or maybe it's an anger thing, and you just go hey I got an idea, let's just pause. And let's yeah. just ask God to change our hearts on this one and that his will would be done in this situation. Man, that's so good. And I mean, yeah, think about politics right now and mm-hmm. think about our state and where it's like, okay, yes. you could choose right now to get angry at the governor yes, and to be upset. Yes. But what if instead of taking that time and energy, be angry and just pray? Mm-hmm. Man, that's a, that's a terrible yeah. job, you know, being governor or being in leadership right, right now and trying to make these decisions based upon what's best for us. And our friends in Belize that are still shut Correct. down too. Yeah. Same stuff for the government there. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, what if instead of bemoaning all mm-hmm. that's going on, we just took time to pray for it. That's yeah. great. And pray for that person. So like, yeah. for, you know, for me, it's like the person that I'm most upset with in the moment, that might be an indication that God wants me to pray for that person that's or, so true. And, and it's not even for them or for God. It's more for me, you know, yeah. it's just to get my heart calmed down to the spot where I can still be uh, an effective tool that I can be used for God. And so next time I interact with somebody in that area, it's going to be much more effective and my heart is going to be in the right place and not mm-hmm. just a selfish one. Like you talked about, you know, don't, so true. don't go back and forth like that. You know, the passage in James says, so true. All right, wrapping up. Anything else uh, we want to talk about? Yeah, here's what I would encourage you guys to do, whether it be in your groups or just your own time, Mm -hmm. is take some time to talk about the decisions that you've been making. And maybe evaluate your decisions with a few other people who might be able to keep you accountable. That could be in your small group. That could be one-on-one with another person. But talk about maybe some of the choices where maybe you blew it or maybe some areas where you can do better at making good decisions so they can hold you accountable. That would be a great step for all of us to take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would be uh, very encouraged to do that. And so um, for many of our friends that are here in New Mexico, you know know that the governor has released a new public health order that went into effect today. And so that um, is going to impact your small groups in some ways. So make sure you're talking to your small group leader about that. If you need any resources or if you need any, you have any questions, feel free to get in contact with us here at the church about how that's going to go. Uh, mm-hmm. For some of you may be asking, yes, we will be transitioning online for the next two weeks. There will be an email sent out shortly to all of you so you know that. But be sure to tune in online or on TV. You can find all the information at sagebrush.church slash locations on when you can tune in. In fact, we have our pastoral team that's in the comments or in the chat right now that will be in the chat on Facebook every weekend that'll get a chance to interact with you as well. And here's what I would ask you to do is that if you have any ideas, if there's a way that you want us to connect with you over the next two weeks, send an email to hello at sagebrush.church if you have any Mm -hmm. ideas for ways that we could keep you engaged online or the things that uh, you're looking for during these next two weeks so that way we can all have the heart of God and we can all help support each other as we're going through. And if you're not involved in a small group, I would say this would be the best time. Get involved in an online small group where you can meet over Zoom, where you guys can talk and keep that connection up. Anything else? We are not closing down, friends. No. You know, again, this is us staying open and reaching even more people. Right. And I remember the last time that we got to kind of this point, we all got nervous and scared about it. But God did far more than we could ever ask or imagine. And even this last weekend, we celebrated. uh, There were almost 100 people who got baptized on all of our campuses. And that's because God is at work. And as a result of that, we had a family that drove up from Deming, New Mexico, The only way they found our church was by the fact that we went on television. They came up here to get baptized, and man, God's doing far more than we could ever ask or imagine. That is amazing. And then another update I'll have to give to you, because most of you are on our online family here. We are still going through Operation Christmas Child, and we are collecting boxes through Monday of next week. The 23rd is our last day for collection, so you can bring them by any of our physical locations Or if you haven't yet, build a box online. I think we have 540 boxes built online alone. We have a goal of 1,000, so we're we're over halfway there. I think we can make it, so you can go to sagebrush.church slash OCC. Because I find, too, when I'm in a spot where I'm just upset about stuff, if I can do something good for someone else, 
it's amazing how God uses that to change my own mind. So, so good. Uh, for those of you, if you have it available, it's $25. It might just be a way to go, you know what? I'm going to focus on something good mm-hmm. that I know is going to make a difference for others. So, so just like Andrew said, get involved in a small group. Talk to your small group this week about what we could do. Send us an email if there's anything that we could do to help engage you over the next two weeks. And we look forward to seeing you online this weekend and right back here on Monday. See you guys.